Hello, fellow citizens! I am your host, Jess, and this is your reminder that the weight of the entire world is not on your shoulders, and you can make a difference. This podcast is about what it means to be a citizen and neighbor where you live. For me, that's Philadelphia. Okay, so before COVID, I was working at a live television studio on the sets and props team. And in 2018, I quickly learned that one of my coworkers shared my guilty pleasure for reality shows about love. Linda's here. Hi, Linda. Hi, Jess. (laughs) (laughs) We spend a lot of time at work talking about 90 Day Fiance. (laughs) Can you? It's my favorite show ever. (laughs) Yeah, so can you explain the concept of this show for our listeners? Sure. So they have a couple uh, versions of 90 Day Fiancé, either before the 90 days or just, you know, the regular 90 Day Fiancé. So usually one person in the couple needs um, a visa to come over to the U.S. So they apply for a K-1 visa and they have 90 days to get married. So... They come into the U.S. and <laughs> and it's just like make or break it. It's like either they 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 get married and it's happily ever after, or it's a complete disaster. Which so one is that's... your favorite? Because then there's also ninety day the other way. Oh right, 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 right. There's still there's yeah, there's like three versions. <laughs> you know, I love them. You know, I have to say I like watching it before the ninety days first because uh-huh. then you see the story before they apply for the k-1 visa it's more like when they first meet each other which i find really really cool and it kind yeah. of just makes me like oh appreciate love because i'm like they really do love each other oh you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> i hope i mean like they just met like they've been having this online or like telecommunication relationship for who knows how long some of them they've only been talking i think for like maybe a year or like nine months and then they meet each other did you see the yeah. one with the girl that went to Australia? Oh, I did. Yeah, Stephanie. And they were only talking for a couple of months before she went over there. I know. I know. That was a, that was a story. And then I follow her on social media, Stephanie, and I'm like, I'm like, wow. Like, I, it's just it's amazing to see their life story. I'm like, they like the 90 Day Fiance shows make the housewives look boring. What? <laughs> like, you think so? Oh, yeah, because it's like real life. It's not, st- I mean, maybe it's staged a little bit, but I mean, it's generally real life. And then when you follow them on social media afterwards, it's just like, wow. I started like- following the lady who was the widow that um, her boyfriend was like, what was his name? And he was telling her that he was in England and she was going to go visit him. But then she oh. asked him for the airport and he didn't know yes. the airport. And then her daughter and her son were like, mom, you're clearly being catfished. Yes. I cannot remember <laughs> his name. Oh, it was like Edwards. It was something with an S at the end. Yeah. Oh, oh. I'm, it's going to come to me. and I'm just going to end up blurting yeah, it out. Blurt it out when I... it comes to you. <laughs> <laughs> and Jess, did you watch um, the 90 day like I think it was like where they were just like critiquing the show Who? Um, that started at the beginning of COVID. Oh my God. I can't <gasps> remember the name, but um, it was where they were critiquing like what, uh, like kind of like what social media was saying about them. So they were like rewatching their own episode. <gasps> oh, Miles. No, it's not Miles. No. Damn it. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Williams. Williams. Williams! Yes! That's so Williams. Williams. I'm like, I do it. But then I, so I followed her on social media and now she actually is with a guy in real life who is oh, just good. as good looking as Williams. And I don't okay. know like where he lives, but they've met. So I'm like, Aww. okay, good for her. That's really good. She was a pretty lady. <laughs> yeah. and she lost all that weight. And I'm like, she totally like, you know, deserved a good man. She so really me. believes in love. She was she like, can. he just, he loves me so, Williams is in love with me, and I don't know who, like, hacked into his email address, and they're I saying know. that they have these naked pictures of me, and they're like, mom, you said I have naked pictures! She's like, well, of course <laughs> I did. Oh, I know, and her daughter was just like, mom, <laughs> like, get a clue, basically. And then she like, hired a private investigator. I know, I'm like, good for her. And then yes. the whole Google, um like search with an image i'm like Mm -hmm. i guess i didn't even realize but that's what catfish does too yeah which just you got me watching catfish (gasps) (laughs) did you start like from the very beginning no i i just kind of will randomly watch now i record the new season and i love it even though it's like a 
COVID style catfish. I'm like, I love it. Oh my God. I didn't know it was out. Okay. I'm going to find mm-hmm. it. Oh my God. Yeah. That's what I'm doing with the rest of my day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause they do zoom meetings and they pretty much confront people. It's great. Whoa. Yeah. Mind blown. Well, when we're mm-hmm. not talking about 90 day fiance, we were able to bond over our experience in retail which isn't always fun for everybody. It kind of made me like not want to work in customer service, but. <laughs> right. So but the nice. No, well, our ahead. job. Oh, yeah. Well, because we were visual merchandisers, really, in retail. So like our job, at least we didn't have to really deal with the customers as much. But mm-hmm. I totally agree. I'm like, you still had to a little bit here and there. Were you ever working on a mannequin and somebody said, oh, can I give you a hand? And they oh. held up the mannequin hand. <laughs> Yes, but I have to say, I also said that to some of my coworkers just to be corny and, and annoying. <laughs> I was to break the ice in an environment like that, you know. Yeah, that's true. I would be. Or make- how- well, oh I would be making the beds sometimes, and the, yeah. my coworkers would be like, "Can you come to my house and make my bed?" Oh, I was just gonna say that about about Christmas decor. <laughs> like you'd be oh. doing a tree. They're like, "Oh, can you come decorate my house?" I'm like, "Um, <laughs> hell no!" But I can't say that to you. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's easier when it's your coworkers and not shoppers. Right. Right. If it's they true. know you, if they don't know you cuz like at the studio it was there were so many people that worked there and so I didn't know most of the people that were talking to me. <laughs> right. But even like in the studio people like a, a vendor would be like, "Hey, come decorate my house." I'd be like, "Oh, yeah. not again. Here we are." Right. <laughs> Ma'am, do you know how long I've been working on Christmas? Do you know how many years I've done Christmas? You're not the first one to say that. Right. It's so true. And it's so annoying. Like, everyone says the same thing. I'm like, can we get a little more creative here? (laughs) So how did you get into, like, visual and sets and props? Like, what's your background? Well... I started out when I was living in Wisconsin, I went to a trade school, just like a local college, and I um, got my degree in retail management. But in that program, associate's degree, I should say, um, in that program, I like there were some classes that were visual merchandising like focused. So I was like, ooh, this is cool. I'm like, I like this. Like, this is the side that I do like of retail. And um, there was like brochures at the time of like this college out in California called the Fashion Institute Design and Merchandising. And I was always like, oh, that looks amazing. I'm like, I would love to go there someday, but how the hell would I ever pay for this? <sighs> um, so then after I, you know, finished my degree, um, I ended up going out to LA. So then I went to, I actually went for the visual communications program out at the Fashion Institute Design and Merchandising <gasps> in downtown LA. And then um, I was in like the visual communications program for the, the first quarter. Um, unfortunately, I transferred to the merchandise marketing. I don't really know why I did because I kind of felt like I was always going to still be a visual merchandiser. Um, I think costs was something to do with it. And I was paying for everything alone. So I was like, oh, if I could just get a degree and move on with my life, that would be ideal. So that's what I ended up doing. And that's what I finished um, with. But ever since I've been doing visual styling. So my first like real visual job out of college was um, a furniture store um, where I just did display with two other girls and decorated the whole store. And, and that's really what it all started. And ever since then I've been doing visual jobs. That's pretty cool. So you went from Wisconsin out to LA. I did. What was that <laughs> like? I loved it. It was a culture shock. Absolutely. I was like, whoa, I'm from a small town in Wisconsin. I have never even seen like or experienced half of the stuff that the city has to offer. The people, everything, the languages. I was like, what? But I loved it. I loved it. So were you kind of because like I know I transferred to college and then like that's when you kind of let loose and you're like, oh, my God, it's a whole different world. Was it? Yeah. Was it the wildest time of your life? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say I, I I went to clubs a lot. My roommate, um, had a connection with one of the promoters and he would get us into, um, a couple clubs in LA. I saw a few of my first celebrities. I saw (laughs) Hilary Duff and the guys from, (laughs) the guys from Good Charlotte. I'm like, I I think it was, was it Benji that was dating Hilary Duff back in like the mid 2000s? The one that's with Cameron Diaz now. I think that's the one that was dating 
Oh my god, that, I don't. I wasn't like into good it. Charlotte. Yeah, yeah I'm I not know. really into good Charlotte, but whatever. But it was just kind of funny because I'm like, oh my god. So yeah, and then you know, I met a few people, hung out with them. You know, clubs would once the club would close at like three, then there'd be another one like after, and they'd be like, oh, what? that one opens at four, and I'm like, what? Like this isn't what Wisconsin was like at all. Are and there clubs in up. Wisconsin? In Milwaukee, but I I left Wisconsin when I was 21. Oh yeah. Um, so, so I didn't really prime get time. Yeah. So I feel like when I was in LA was when I like was like freshly 21. So um, yeah, did I you, had a lot of. Did you know like other like real life stuff, like how to do your laundry and like how to pay your bills before you left home? Oh, yeah. My mom um, <laughs> taught me how to do laundry when I was 14. And I was nice. like, OK, I was kind of mad at her. I was like, what the heck? Like, I'm a kid. <laughs> this is crap, but I'm so thankful she did. And then same with like paying bills. Like when I was 18, I got my first credit card and yeah, I was a little like, Oh shoot. Like, you know, is this going to be bad? But I was able to build credit by 21 where I was able to take out all my student loans without a co-signer. That's awesome. So I was pretty responsible. Uh, You are kind of independent. I am. I like it. Yeah. So, okay. So your hometown is like, is it like suburbs or like industrial or is suburbs. it a city? It's a suburb. No. Yeah. It's like a <laughs> suburb. I mean, cornfields, you know, Ooh. like boonie roads, like country driving. Yeah. Like um, there's like maybe two highways that would be like in and out of the town I lived in. Is it really like, small and like everybody knows each other? Um. I'll be honest. I don't even know what the population is now. It's a, I think it was like five. I think when I lived there when I was younger, I want to say it was like five or six thousand. Oh, OK. Um, um, but I yeah, I mean, people, I guess if you get yourselves in trouble or like I know I know some girls that got themselves in trouble and, you know, the police knew them. And like, you know, I guess if you're a troublemaker, yeah, you're known in the town. But if you say to yourself, you're not at all. I mean, um, but you so weren't I say, a like, troublemaker. No, I had bad friends though. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was the good girl. It that wasn't hung out with ever the bad. you. It was your friends. Yeah, I was the good girl that hung out with the bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> but I turned out great, so I learned something from it. <laughs> That's so. true. So you went to LA for school, and now you live in Philadelphia. What brought you to Philly? Uh, my fiance's job. Um, we met out in California, actually. So uh, we did like long distance dating for a while. And then I actually went back to Wisconsin for about a year and a half. And then he came here and I was like, I'll go with you. I'll go anywhere for love. <laughs> <laughs> but and you're still here. happily together. How long ago oh, was yeah. that? 13 years ago. <laughs> yeah like time flies I'm like wow but on the good side like we do travel well before COVID we would always go back to California or yeah back I'd go back home to visit so it was like I was here but I was still like kind of there too I guess has your family been to Philly um yes yeah all of my family members have visited except for my brother Mm -hmm. how do they feel about Philly uh, like, do they I mean, travel enough to be like, oh, it's just another place? Or do they come in there like, oh, this is a lot? A little bit of both. Yeah. They're trying yeah. to play it cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my sister, um, she's like three years older than me. One of my sisters, she's she's been all over. She's been to Paris. She's been, I think she's been to Italy. I mean, she's she's traveled like years yeah. ago. So to her, it's like, oh, she just asked me one day. She's like, how did you end up here? I'm just trying to figure that out still. And I'm like, I have no idea. Like, I guess Al's job. You guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you ended up there because we met each other. And so when we were at the studio, it was four 10 hour days and then you'd have three days off. And I remember you traveled like every chance that you got. So where are your favorite places to go? Um, well, I love the West Coast. It has my heart still, Aww. but <laughs> um, I love LA. That's that's I feel like it's like a second home to me, but um but for like a nice weekend getaway, I love Las Vegas. That's that's really like my place to go and just like um just to kind of like let loose and I don't gamble, but I just like the relaxing environment. 
do you it go, and do it. So you go to like shows? I go to shows and I just like to walk around and, and drink on the strip. But yeah, I, I do. I do. I do like shows a lot. And then I always try ever, to see one. Um, do you like ever rent a car when you're out there and like drive around? I have not driven, but when I go with my fiance, he has rented a car. Where do you go? We've been to Red Rock. Um, yeah, it's a really beautiful like, little like national park. Um, I've been to Grand Canyon. Oh my gosh. So we went, yeah, we went to Arizona. Um, and then there's another city. It's a ghost town. It's called God Springs. <gasps> And it's like about 40 minutes outside um, of Vegas, like almost to California. And it's a little ghost town and they have like um, a little bar, like a little saloon. And it's haunted, which I didn't know it was haunted until I saw it on Ghost Adventures. (laughs) And I'm like, what the heck? I've been in here. And supposedly a lady was murdered in the bathroom. And I'm like... No wonder why I felt sketchy in and there. You were like, I'm... she looked like that lady that talked to me in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, I mean, it's a single stall, like, you know, with a door that closes. And and um, I always felt a little weird in there, but I never really thought about it. And then I've been there three times. And then I saw this Ghost Adventures episode and I'm like, <laughs> what the heck? All three <laughs> times, nobody gave you a hint that it was like haunted. No. No, and then there's a bullet hole in like a wall, like around another corner, and I was like, "What?" So next time I go there, I'm going You're gonna to go find back. This... Yeah, <laughs> I am, and I'm actually gonna go with a friend that moved there. So I Good. told her about it. So that's yeah. Exciting. I'm like, <laughs> she's like, "Oh my god, I have to see that." Yes, I would like to see that. Yeah. So Las Vegas is like your weekend place. LA is like your second home. What about international? Um, well, I love a good tropical place. Um, I've only been as far as tropical countries, Costa Rica, which I loved. Um, but I feel like I've been to Europe more. So I really love Copenhagen, Denmark. I'm like, that's, that's really one of my favorite cities to go to. And we just learned that it's an island. We learned it together. <laughs> and I'm like, how did I not know that? I'm like, there's so many times. <laughs> and- been there like three times. I'm like, how did I not know that? Because every time I've been there, I fly into Copenhagen. So, and it's mm-hmm. always been at night. So maybe I never really realized I'm on an island. <laughs> <laughs> but I think also like when people hear island, they just assume like a tropical place. I don't know. Maybe yeah. that's why. That could be. So how long is the flight to Denmark? Uh, shoot. I think it's about six hours. That's it's it? funny. Yeah, because like living on the East Coast, it's almost the same to travel to the West Coast as it is to Europe. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's about the same. Um, You're just jet lagged when you get there because the time zone. What do you do when you're on the plane? I try to sleep, but that's usually not very successful. (laughs) Um, I don't even know. I... (laughs) So you don't like like, bring a book and you're like, I'm going to spend the next six hours reading this book. No, I'll bring magazines, which I know are so old school. No one reads those anymore. But I'm like, I always say I'm going to read them. I never read them. I bring them and they just sit there. And I'm like, oh, I don't really want to read that. So why the hell do I buy them? I don't know. But um, yeah, I'll just like look at the like I'll watch the monitor and like yeah. watch a show or something or try to sleep, like I said, and maybe have a drink or two. Um, I don't like getting up during plane rides to go to the bathroom. So I'm like, I try not to drink. Do you all. get like rewards because you fly? You like seem like you fly a lot. I do, but you know, I've never like I have rewards, but it's weird because I always take different airlines. Oh. So like, so like it never adds up to like benefit me at all. I think yeah, we've gotten magazine subscriptions out of it. That's why I have magazines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, because it's always like, oh no, these points are gonna expire, and they're like, well, you can get a magazine subscription. I'm like, okay, sure. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Show my age with the magazines. Yeah, I know what a magazine is. <laughs> so when you go to Copenhagen, do you like go with an agenda or you're just like, I'm going to wake up and like walk around and figure out what to do? I feel like wake up, walk around and figure out what we're going to do. Um, I feel like once I've seen like the hot spots, like the cool things, um, I'm kind of like, you know, now it's just like, how do I just chilling? Um, I've been to the castle. Oh, my God. The, I think it's the Cronenberg. Cronenberg Castle. That sounds um, 
yeah bend which is so cool so i've had agendas for those things um but i think now i've done that all so i'm i'm just winging it but yeah tivoli is so cool it's it's kind of like what inspired disneyland so oh um, that's the amusement park yeah it's so beautiful it's like it just it's like it's old but it doesn't feel old it just feels like classic and just like it's so pretty anyone who wants to look it up you should because it's so pretty and then i've been there during christmas time so it's all decorated for christmas and they serve hot wine you can you can sit in a santa sleigh and drink hot wine and i'm like mm. yay yeah so. did you go on the roller coasters no i'm too scared of that <laughs> I mean, they're really old, so I think I'd be scared, too. Yeah. <laughs> Do you go, um, like, out to eat when you're in Denmark? Um, I'm a vegetarian, so it's actually a little more difficult for me to eat there. Um, we've tried. I've had pizza, which I know is so lame. I'm like, that's not why I'm – I don't go to a different country to eat pizza, but – I feel like being a vegetarian, it's not as easy there. They have really good potatoes. <laughs> oh, so I feel like I get pizza and potatoes and then I'll, you know, whatever's easy, like eggs. Their breakfast is pretty good. Like when I've had the breakfast at the hotels, but. Like it's um, not a continental breakfast. Like in Oh, America. no. No, it's like they have a full platter of like cheese and like fruit and they'll have like eggs and bacon and stuff and sausage. But like, it's just different. It's just, <gasps> it's like healthy. Mm -hmm. The so coffee you... is amazing. Do you always stay in hotels when you go? Like, do you go to, do you stay at different places every time? Uh, there's this one hotel that we typically will stay in because it's in, like a good central location in the city. Yeah. And then do you walk everywhere? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a train, like, um, I forget the proper name for it, but it's like a, a train. And sometimes we'll take that, but um, you can, it's a really walkable city. But you do, you, you don't speak the language, right? No, I don't. Um, however, I get approached in Danish and I'm like, oh, no, English. I don't speak. And they're like, oh, oh. So then they'll switch back. Do you know like, any common phrases in Danish? Like, no, where's the bathroom? I, like <laughs> I, for, I forgot. I think I knew when I was, I haven't been there for like two years. So. Oh. I think I knew them, but I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. I'm excited for you to get back there. I know. I was I know. looking I mean, up and they said that there's a place called Noma and it's oh. rated like the best restaurant in the world in 2010 oh. and 11 and 12 and 14. Oh, I haven't heard of it. Yeah. Okay. I what mean, I don't know if it's they? still there actually. So maybe that's oh. something worth look looking up. But I assume if it was rated the best restaurant, it would yeah. still be there. I forgot it's to mention too, it's really expensive to eat there. Really Is expensive. it? Mm -hmm, to eat out. What do you think is like the average, not for your pizza, but like an actual meal? <laughs> well, Maybe. How much is the pizza? Oh, oh my God, Jess! If you would have asked me all this before, I'd have had all the answers for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Um, it's like I feel. I want to say like maybe a meal. Maybe was like. Twenty dollars, like U.S. Oh, okay. dollars, but that's right. like just the food. I don't know. Maybe that's not that but expensive. Then it all adds up. When you're there for a week, it becomes expensive. And it's yeah. like, I can't eat out like this every day. And then the, not including drinks and stuff. So is like, that a usually lot of times, how long you're there is a week? Like five, six days. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. I love but it. We also would go over to Sweden too. So that's I was like going to ask fast. you, did you take the bridge to Sweden? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. How long is that bridge? Like how long does it take to get from Denmark to Sweden? Like 40 minutes. Whoa. I was yeah. looking at it on the map. Yeah. It just looks bonkers. Yeah. It's really <laughs> cool. It is. It's so cool. And so. they, but you didn't know it was an island. <laughs> right. It does make, <laughs> duh. <laughs> no, I mean, I totally get it. I didn't, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get it. There's a body of water that separates it, but I'm like, right. I don't know what's on the other side of Denmark. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. <laughs> I'm excited that you went over the bridge. Wait, did you? So how did, did you guys like take a, like a taxi or something? Or did one of you drive? Oh, the the train. Oh, the train. Yeah. You. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah. It, um, shoot. How did we get that? I think it was like to the airport or something. And there was like a way from the airport over, like we transferred 
Yeah. So that's one way to get over to Sweden. But then there's also another way. If you go like more north, then there's a boat that takes you over also. Oh, did you ever do yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Done that a couple of times. And that's cool, too, because you can ride back and forth on the boat. So like yeah. even if you like like if you just want to like have a drink and like have food, it's like nice. Like it's I don't know if you've ever been to the Staten Island Ferry in New York. No, I haven't. Okay. Well, it's similar to that where it's like um, just like a public transportation type boat. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they have one but, here in Philly that goes to Camden. Oh, okay. So the one in Denmark is like huge and you can fit, they can fit cars on it and semi trucks and like, Whoa. but yeah, but then like the upper part is for like the people to just like eat and drink and just like chill out while oh. you go over the water. So yeah. So There's did you just ways. stay on the boat for the food and the drinks? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've done that. We've just like gone back and forth, back and forth. Like da, da, da. That's, that's what people nice. do. I know it, it's like really cheap too. Can you send me stuff. like pictures from your trips so I can like promote our episode of some cool pictures? <laughs> sure. Because you said I that you that. like like the buildings too in Copenhagen, yeah. and I yeah, was the just architect- looking at like Wikipedia, which isn't the same, but <laughs> yeah, the architecture is so pretty. And like, just like even the fashion of the people and like the Scandinavian design, it's so cool. It's very, very inspiring. If you could recommend like three places in Copenhagen, where should people go? Like a building or like an icon or a park or something? Definitely Tivoli. Um, I really like the Christmas market that they have during the holidays. Um I feel like a lot of European countries have it, but um, there's just something special about the one there. Maybe because I've I go there usually every November. Oh. I've kind of made it a tradition, like for like three years in a row. We went. Um, it's just so cute. Yeah. Um, you can like drink hot wine and just like buy little cute things that are like crafts and like there's just people in like little cabins that are um, like in these little huts and like they, oh it's just cute and it's freezing <laughs> cold but it's like fun. Yeah. Um and. Oh my god, what is the name? It's the I can't, oh my god. Well, the castle that's down there, the downtown. Oh, let's see. I'm I have the Wikipedia so open. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Does he know it? What is the castle that's downtown, Denmark? The cool one with the, the guards. Oh, there goes something. Sorry. Oh, I think it starts with an A. Hold on, let me pull up I'm gonna pull up Mac. Google Maps. They never let me down. <laughs> and then it's they like have a... the little icons that show you where you should visit. Yeah. All right. Let's see. <clears throat> I think it starts with an A. Wait, the castle? There's Rosenborg the... Castle. Maybe. No, it's where the queen lives. Where the Sorry. queen lives? Okay. So that's another thing, right? Okay. So they have a queen in Copenhagen? Yeah. Yeah, Melenborg. Melenborg? A Melenborg. <laughs> I knew it was with an A. Oh, my God. We figured yes. it out. Yeah, I actually have pictures of those guys. They're awesome. Um, They yelled at me. Oops. I went. <laughs> what did you do? You know those, like, you see them in London, like, where the guards stay inside, like, a red, like, little, the like, booth. a little hut. I, yeah, I don't know the proper name for it, but I went inside for a picture, and I got yelled at. <laughs> He like charged up towards me and he's wearing this huge hat, fuzzy. He looks all cute, like a little like nutcracker and he comes and yells at me and I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, sorry. I'm just, he's like, no, out of there, out of there. I'm like, ah. He's like, you stupid Americans. (laughs) Yeah. I have a lot of pictures of those guys. (laughs) Do people like, how do people react when they find out you're an American? I think they're just like, oh, okay. She's just a fake blonde. (laughs) (laughs) She doesn't know any better. She can live another day. They're nice. Everyone speaks English. I feel like, you know, it's never like scary at all. They're that makes nice. it less intimidating. Cause see, that's what I would yeah. be nervous about traveling is like, I don't speak any other languages. Mm-hmm. But if it's all in, if there's always like an English translation, then maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll go to mm-hmm. Copenhagen when all this is over. Yeah, you should. Um, and like even at the airport, there's all the signs are still in English. You know, it's like, it's very. I think they know people are coming there from all over, so they try to make it easy. Do they have a cool airport? Oh, my God. Yes, you can. um, You know how, like, most airports you can, like, you have to, like, go sit at a restaurant to, like, eat a meal or, like, um, like get, or you'll have to go to the crappy little, like, 
newsstand to get like a pretzel. <laughs> you can actually get like decent food at Copenhagen Airport and beer and just sit there and drink on like a bench and like like it's just it's just like a cool relaxing atmosphere and it's huge and it's just it's not yeah it's nice <laughs> is that the coolest airport that you've been to i think so yeah i have a yeah. my sister-in-law she was a flight attendant um before covid hit she did it from like oh. december until i think she was still able to fly until like august of this year oh. um but so I kind of like want to bring her on the show just to ask her about that. Cause like she's yeah. bummed that she's not doing it, but like she'll do it mm. again eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's been to a lot of different airports and like, that's kind of one of the fun things that she talks with us about. She's like, Oh, this airport looks like this and this airport, like don't stay in there too long. Cause it's not great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Copenhagen's nice, big and airy and you're not like, you know, if, like people are all over you, you know, Ew. it's nice. Yeah, you don't want people all over you, especially after COVID. Ugh. No. <laughs> so when you're not traveling, like you're not traveling right now. Mama. No, I wish. Every time I go to the doctor, they're like, have you been out of the state in the last 14 days? I'm like, Ugh, no, I haven't. Oh, you're so sad. <laughs> it's sad, but I know it's for a good cause. And I, you know, I don't want to be part of the problem. So. Yeah. But so you and your fiance, you live in an apartment building and like I'm in a row home in South Philly. And every time I'm in my living room with my windows open, I can see my neighbors across the street. (laughs) And so like I see them when they come and go and I'm like just watching because I'm such a pupil watcher. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I imagine it's like really different to meet your neighbors in an apartment building. It is. Um, I feel like I see my next door neighbor often like because she walks her dog and we'll just we'll talk about like covid or like our pets because she has a cat as well as i um but i feel like i usually don't see them unless i'm in the elevator i get trapped in the elevator with them and their dog which is totally fine but i'm like i you know i'm like oh who's your dog what's the name can i pet it and like you know that's like a good icebreaker but other than that i really don't mingle that much with the neighbors do you know if before covid your building hosted like community events for people to meet each other oh yeah we we did um yeah they they would do community events and it's been my complex has been i've lived here for maybe six years and i feel it's been owned by three different management companies so (laughs) so it's changed but there has been times we've had like a dj and like a music at the pool part like a little pool party um they've done like food in the clubhouse they've done christmas parties um ways to like get people to you know become friends but i know like some of my neighbors i've heard them talking in the hall they'll do like a happy hour at the dog park so (laughs) it's like the dog (laughs) park for your building Mm -hmm. oh my gosh this place is fancy i know (laughs) it's not the dog park's not too big but i mean they have like a teeter-totter and all this stuff i'm like do dogs really play on that yeah um so yeah, I, if I was a dog, I would. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you're a cat person, so maybe <laughs> I am. I am a cat person. If you were a cat, do you think you'd be like Rosie? <sighs> <laughs> this is a very yeah, existential I mean, question. <laughs> she's really grumpy, so I'm not grumpy. So I would say probably not. <laughs> But, um, I mean, she's so sweet. So, like, I feel like I'm pretty sweet. <laughs> but you know your, so you know your next door neighbor? Is that who you know? Mm-hmm. Are yeah. you going to give her a gift for Christmas? Hmm. I'm thinking about, so I have a neighbor, um, we have a house next to us, and then we have an empty lot, and then we have another neighbor. Mm-hmm. And so the ones next to us, like, we see them come out and, like, go to their car sometimes, and they just had a baby, like, right before COVID happened, and I think they have a cat. And, like, there's a lot of activity at their house because now they, I think, like, when COVID started, they started doing compost. And so, like, I'll see they have a little compost bucket that gets, like, delivered and picked up. And then they have, so they're a three-story building. And the new three-story buildings, they do the steps um, go up kind of high so that your basement is a little bit above ground. Uh And they hang a planter on their banister. It's, like, it's pretty big. So we had gotten a garden bed for outside of our house. It's like a raised garden bed. Mm -hmm. And I put plants that I got from like Home Depot in there and I was all excited. 
because the neighbors had plants too. And I was like, oh, look us with our plants. Well, then I go out one day to touch up my garden bed and I realize that they hire a company that switches out their flowers in their planter. Well, that's nice. And now I've (laughs) seen it like at a lot of places and I kind of want to like find out who it is because my garden bed is not like fantastic or anything. Uh (laughs) Time consuming too. So if you pay someone, why not? I don't have the most green thumb and like it'll be supporting small business. But anyway, (laughs) long story. Anyway, I am like trying to be more neighborly, especially this year. And I was like, I know like I've lived here for over four years now. And I don't think I've made like a connection with my next door neighbors. And I'm wondering if it would be like creepy to like give them a card and like a small present to each house just to be like, oh, happy holidays. I'm happy to be your neighbor. Like. It's not creepy. I think it's a nice thing to do. Most people wouldn't do that. So if you can set a trend and I mean, I think that's great. I hope it goes well because I was going to like put my phone number in it in case they ever like, I don't know, need anything. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's what people do when like, you know, someone comes to the neighborhood or like buys a house. Like, like uh, I have a friend same, like she just bought a house and like all her neighbors were like, oh, here's a gift. And like, oh, welcome to the, welcome to the, the little Vill- whatever they live in welcome what? to the neighborhood i'm like village I'm like, welcome to the neighborhood that's what i mean <laughs> where does she live uh elkins park yeah where's that mm, that's like like west pa it's like near north philly i think it's like not oh it's yeah like yeah the, but yeah like will it's like a weird like middle that i don't really understand every time i look at the map i'm like wait where is this place is like in a weird spot (laughs) (laughs) because i used to work in willow grove so i'm like wait am i going to willow grove yeah i'm like like, wait no it's a different direction so that sounds familiar yeah well good for her that she like moved someplace where everybody's super nice like that Mm -hmm. yeah it's great we used to have we used to have block cleanups and so that's how we would kind of meet people but not Mm -hmm. everybody would come out like my neighbors, they would never come to the block cleanups. And so yeah. we didn't do them this year because COVID and we're still not doing it to be safe. Um, so I was like, oh, maybe this is a good thing because like yeah. we haven't talked to anybody. I think so. People are shy and they right. kind of like it's, I don't know, but it also is like, they're probably gonna be like, oh, wait, do I have to give them a gift now too? Like, oh. you know, that it makes that awkward, weird moment, but like, whatever. Well, I was only going to get, so I was, oh, wait. So I was thinking either I'll just do a holiday card. And then I thought another option would be I could do a holiday card and I could do like little hand warmers like that, you know, you get oh, at like Target. I thought that might cute. be cute because I don't want to do food because you never know like what people's diets are. And I didn't want to do anything like expensive. So like at least if it's the hand warmers, they'll probably know like, oh, it was less than $5. Good. Now I don't have to like, I'm not mm-hmm. in her debt. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah well yeah like same like my coworkers. i've never bought everyone a gift but i'm like oh, i'm gonna be nice and i actually am trying to help a small business old coworker friend and she crochets so i'm like she has a cute little like etsy business so i'm like i wanted to help her and, and her things are super cute so I, I wanted to buy them anyway so um i'm doing that as well so like yeah sometimes it's nice just to give a gift to like people when they don't expect it you know yeah I hope it works out. I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah. (laughs) So here's my big question of the podcast. I ask this to everybody. How are you making a difference in your neighborhood, Linda? In your community? (laughs) Other than avoiding the elevator when I see neighbors because I don't want to be stuck. (laughs) I'm just kidding. No. um, But um, I really love animals and my cat, Rosie, I got her from comp animals in landberg pennsylvania um i got her about three years ago so i it's a shelter that's um owned by two women that work full time and they just kind of volunteer their free time to help all these little animals that are considered like unadoptables and i try to donate to them as whenever i can so especially during covid i'm like i feel like they really need it now because I feel like a lot of people are staying home so like they're either adopting pets or like for some reason getting rid of their pets i don't know why yeah. but they would do that but um maybe they can't afford them anymore because oh. of you know how expensive animals cost so 
you know, I see on their Facebook um, posts that they always like little have little animals that, you know, need a surgery or need help or something. So I'm like, oh, so I always, you know, whenever I can, even if it's like $15 here and there, it's like they have a way to donate on their Facebook page. So. Oh, I love that. I just signed up to possibly foster a dog for the holidays. Oh. So I really hope they call us. I don't know how long it's going to be. Yeah. They yeah. Said, they said it would be like December like 23rd or 24th until January 3rd or 4th. Oh, okay. So a yeah. Christmas pop. That's what um, you can also do through Comp Animals. You can foster. So that's great. Yay. Yeah. Oh, That's so nice. I like that shout out. I'm going to get their I'm going to get the Comp Animals um link in the description. So if anybody's looking for a companion or some place to donate to, everybody can make a difference in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, animals need us too. That's true. Oh. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Is Rosie around for a cameo? Um, I think she's in the other room. Oh. Is- I is Rosie around? <laughs> See if I can get Al to bring her over. I think he has his headphones on. <laughs> oh no, that's okay. Um, you can just send can... me a really cute picture of her. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rosie was fun. Yeah, it has been. It has been fun. It would have been more fun if Rosie came, but that's fine. <laughs> I can go grab her. Just I don't, I don't Got know. a minute? Do what? Rosie, where is she? <laughs> We're gonna have an appearance of Rosie. <gasps> Rosie watch. (laughs) I know she was just by my feet earlier. I'm like, where the heck did she go? She likes to sit by me. I'm like, "Hmm." she's a grumpy little grandma. You Hmm. you got, um, so what are you doing these days when you're not at work? If you're not traveling? Uh, Oh, wait, here's Rosie. Hold on. (laughs) She's crabby. Let's show how cute she is. She's so Uh cute. Hi, Rosie. Welcome to the podcast. You- She's a ragdoll <laughs> Siamese. Oh my god. How old is she? Um we think eleven. And you got her you've been with her for three years? Yeah, we got her when she was nine and she was considered a senior citizen at the time, but um still is. So, oh, she's so sweet though. I mean, supposedly she wouldn't let the grandkids up the stairs. And I'm like, hmm. And I guess she was biting. And I'm like, well, I bet they were probably mean to her. Yeah. So so even when animals are like in shelters and they have maybe a description like that, don't always listen because mm-hmm. I think it's just the environment they're in. Like we are so patient with her. We give her all the love she deserves. And, you know, it's like, I just feel like animals react to who their owners are really. Yeah. They really pick up on your energy. Yeah. For our so listeners, used- Rosie has the cutest blue eyes and she's looking into my soul right now. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could get her to meow. She sounds like she smoked a pack of cigarettes when she meows. It's so funny. <laughs> All right, Rosie, you ready to go down? Okay. Bye, Rosie. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so you said she's usually at your feet? Yeah, if she's not sleeping in my bed, putting fur all over. Yeah, she usually will sit by my feet. It's, does she sit with you when you're on your new um, Adobe Cloud apps? <laughs> yeah, she does. If what she are wants you attention. doing on Adobe? Oh, um, I'm trying to teach myself Illustrator. It was something that I learned, started to learn when I was in California before I switched my major. And it always really intrigued me. And I was like, ah, that sounds so cool. And I just haven't like it's been a long time since I was mm-hmm. in college but I just was like now is the time to like try to relearn this little skill because you never know like where it could take me yeah so just it's like pretty much just graphic design so, so I can make what are you logos doing in it right and, now I'm um, just like teaching myself I have a book oh it's actually right here I'll show it to you whoa how old are you <laughs> Adobe Illustrator it's um classroom I don't know if you oh, can read it classroom yes. in a book Oh my god. So it's like step by step, like everything. You're serious and about like, this. Yeah, I'm like, who needs a teacher when I mean, you can just buy that book? I like it. Yeah, I know and they why... have the tutorials in the app too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could download like programs and like it's just like little little like assignments, I guess. And oh. that's kind of how you learn. It's super cool. So that's what I'm trying to do in my free time, which you know, I need to get on that maybe today. Yeah, because that, that could be bit. a whole side hustle for you. I know I can make logos. I can pretty much do and design things. I can do anything. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Can you make our logo for the podcast? 
I can't put it on Apple until I have an original artwork and I haven't figured out what I want to do yet. Oh, like just design one for you all together? Yeah. Sure. I mean, I can (laughs) play with it. Absolutely. Yeah. I haven't thought of anything yet because I know like a lot of people, they put the actual text of the title in their little thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I just don't know like if I should put like a picture and like what it should be and stuff like that. So... But, I mean, I'm still trying to figure out even what this podcast is, so I'm not in a rush. <laughs> yeah, well, we can talk and try to think of some ideas. Figure out your rate. Yeah, my rate. <laughs> yeah, I got to support each other. Yay. Right. Did you want to chat about anything else, Linda? I don't know. I think we've covered a lot of my life. <laughs> I'm, like, itching to go watch Catfish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's really good. I and yeah they have a new host um i think her name's what? cammy yeah it's a woman her name's cammy um and is she with cammy and neve, neve? Mm-hmm. oh okay <laughs> i think she's been on like the last i think she started right before covid i don't know um but she's super she's really good it's nice to have a woman yeah um on there too it's just it's just good i think overall to have like a man and a woman hosting it i've seen it with a lot of the guests the guest co-hosts I like mm-hmm. when Max's, I mean, when Neve's wife would be on it with him. Because uh, I feel like she's always just as shocked as I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll like Cammy. I think. I think it's good because she kind of just, she gets it, you know. What? She yeah, she she gets the whole thing. She can read people. She can figure out when they're scammers. It's great. Do you What, what do you watch <laughs> it on? I have Sling TV. Oh, okay. I just record it on there. I'm going to find it. I have like Hulu and I have YouTube TV. I also want to mm-hmm. find, I think there's a New Jersey Shore. Oh, yeah. I never got into that. Very much. Oh, don't get in the commercials, it. though. Yes. <laughs> oh, this was so great, Linda. Thank you so much for doing this with me. If you guys, if you listeners want to share your favorite international destinations and airports with me, hit me <laughs> up on the Instagram. <laughs> Uh-huh. slip into my dms i'm this jess t-h-i-s-j-e-s uh did you need to like promote anything linda um i'll give comp animals um uh, website if you want to donate mm-hmm. um it's comp animals.org yay and that's in landenburg pa but yeah. do you know i'm gonna look into it because you're in like king of prussia so how far was that for you I think it was about like 50 minutes. Okay. And yeah, I'd like go past Westchester and then like go through random roads I've never driven on before. Um, but there was a really good winery that I found when I was driving there. <laughs> so that's a plus. It's called PDX Winery. Paradox. I think that's the full name. Um, it's good. And they sell their wine at Wagons. So our listeners can support two local businesses. Yeah, it's right down the road, honestly. So I love it. That reminds me, like, I can't wait till, like, we can get together again at the hockey rink by the studio <laughs> for happy hour. Yeah, we did go there a couple weeks ago, and I was like, whoa, this is a little too many people for COVID. Oh. But, but it was fun. Luckily, we didn't get sick being there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. But, yeah, once it's all over. Yeah. Until then... Stay safe, Linda. Okay, you too. It was good chatting. I'll see you around the neighborhood. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) 